New Zealand has been clear from the outset that the protection of civilians is paramount and the requirement of international law. Israel must not undertake this offensive which would have catastrophic consequences and Israel must listen to the international community and meet its obligations under international law. There is an urgent need for an immediate humanitarian ceasefire together with the release of all hostages and a significantly increased flow of humanitarian assistance to civilians in need. New Zealand supports critical effects by regional partners to achieve, to achieve this as soon as possible. And on the UNWA investigation, well, New Zealand did not suspend its aid. No, what we did was to ensure that the World Food Programme, the International Committee of the Red Cross, the UN Nation, the United Nations Children's Fund, UNICEF, that we funded them and kept the funding going until the next tranche is due on the 1st of June. Yeah. Many of the statements are being made by all sorts of people are simply not correct in this matter. And it is sad looking to offshore at a tragedy that it could be politicised by some. This is not what's happening and I would beg to ask them this one question. What would you do more than we've tried to do? What would you actually do than we've more tried to do? Oh no, chanting like that. I never saw that member. I never saw that member after the vicious atrocity on the 7th of October say a word last year. Unbelievable. I dare because it's the truth. I dare because I'm not politicising a tragedy. I dare because I am concerned for innocent Palestinian citizens and I want something to be solved, to be done to solve it. That's why I dare, not to politicise them, not to be one-sided about it, because there are terrorists on both sides and this is the government that, that deputed as terrorists Israeli settlers because of their behaviour. Not just Hamas, but Israeli settlers as well. Did those people not notice that? So please, please, in the interest of humanity and in the interest of our concern for the Palestinian people, stop playing politics. It is far more serious than that. No, you can sigh and groan, but the reality is we are a country that has a marvellous humanitarian record and we'll go on helping out here and we'll go on supporting what happened last night in the UN. That is precisely the present government's policy and it always has been. And there was a time when across the political divide we all had that feeling. A two state, I beg your pardon? No, we know. No, we know. We know who invoked. We know who invoked Nazi Germany. The person was in the shop with her at a uh, clothing outlet at the time. She wasn't the one that invoked Nazi Germany, and I did not hear that member call her out back then. I want to let you know, Chloe Swarbrick, you're not getting away with this high-handed "I am more worthy than thou" attitude. Because in this business, you're required to put up the efforts and put up the time, and indeed put up the money. And why does this government want to be a successful government? Well, I'll, I'll, be a pun. I'll no, keep going because the speaker sorry. allows me to, not because you're running the show. Sorry. <laughs> With the goodness of respect. <laughs> have you, sorry, just a minute. Have you, has there been a call for a point of order? Yes, Mr. Speaker. Yeah, stay on your feet when that uh, happens so I can see what's happening. Thank you. A point uh, of order. The Minister there. asserted uh, the presence of. Uh, the member in uh, the occurrence of an event which is a conspiracy that's going around presently and I just want to correct that there is no no, uh, there's no, no suggestion no. that that is sorry, correct. Sorry, you, you can't use the point of order for that sort of purpose. The point. So, yeah, the point of order, Mr Speaker? Well, is it not a no, correction? No, there is, no, just not, let's, let's establish it. There is no point of order because that's not uh, uh, the correct use of the point of order process. If there is offence taken by a, minute, by a member, uh, then they may uh, take a point of order for, uh, for, for the, the matter to be withdrawn. It's not an opportunity to make a political point. Chloe Swarbrick. Point of order, Chloe Swarbrick. The uh, Minister has outlined a conspiracy theory widely circulated online with regard to my alleged presence at allegations uh, that are currently before the courts, and I take deep offence at that, given that the Minister knows that what he is saying is untrue, and I request to withdraw and apologise. Uh, well, well the, the member uh, has made the point. Uh, the member right on one subpoenas may choose to withdraw and apologise for that. Speaking of respect, before the no, point of order. Yep. Speaking of point of order. A conspiracy is when two or more agree to break the law. I never ever made that statement, did I? So if we're going to use language, get to understand it. 
Therefore, so, so I say that the point of order is worthless. Uh, yep, that's, uh, that's the member's response, and that's, that's the way that, that it is. Member, continue with his speech. Thank you, Speaker. I just want to conclude by saying, and sadly, that this was an issue across the political divide over decades. We have always been united for a two-state solution, a permanent two-state solution. And we're asking now for a ceasefire to be a permanent ceasefire and again for a two-state solution. That is still the government's view. And in the meantime, we've worked hard to ensure that we play our humanitarian role, which is respected, I might say, all around the Muslim community to whom I have spoken to worldwide. We're continue playing our role because that is the New Zealand way and we intend to continue it.